Hey guys, I'm back with another DIY tutorial and this time my friend came to me with a unique table request that involved my favorite herringbone pattern. I'm not one to take big risks with my projects, but my girl went out on a limb and I'm so glad that she did. This dark herringbone table has been so much fun to design and build and we're both very, very happy with how it turned out. So she bought these table legs off of Amazon. They were originally black, but she wanted them spray painted this beautiful bronze color. In the description of this video, I'll share the link to those table legs as well as a link to all the tools that I used for this project. I know this bold style might not be for everybody so I'm going to quick show you a video of my dining room table. I built it last year with the same herringbone tabletop. Like I said, I built our tabletop the exact same way as my friend's table but I used some wooden legs that I got at an architectural salvage shop. You can easily follow the tutorial on how to make the herringbone tabletop and then customize the legs and the color however you want. I used a natural color stain for our table and for my friend's table I used the ebony stain from Verithane. Anyway, that is enough talking. I really hope you guys enjoyed this build. Let's get right to the tutorial. This cut list is for a table that is 74 inches long by 42 inches wide by 29 and a half inches high. When cutting large 4 by 8 panels, I like to use clamps in a long board or straight edge so that I have a guide for my circle saw and can cut a perfectly straight line. Measure the center of your plywood panel, then move the measurement to the left 2 and a half inches. Draw a line down the length of the plywood. This line will be a guide for placing all of the 1 by 6 boards. Use your speed square to draw a 45 degree line down the corner of the board. Place the corner of the board at the top of your plywood so that your line on the 1 by 6 board matches up with the line you drew down the plywood. Place your second board so that it butts up to your first board. Use your speed square to verify it's at a 45 degree angle. Draw a 45 degree line on the bottom of your 1x6 board. This line should be about 1 to 2 inches off the end of your plywood. You still want to leave a 1 to 2 inch overhang, but you can cut off the rest of the board. For each of the 1x6 boards, make sure that you start by making a square cut on one end with your miter saw so that all of your boards in the herringbone pattern meet up evenly. I moved the line to the left two and a half inches so that the herringbone zigzag would be centered down the table. Clamp down your first and second 1x6 board. These will be a guide for the rest of your 1x6 boards. Try and use up as much of your scrap board as possible. I was able to make the entire tabletop with four 1x6x8s and three 1x6x6s with very little wood left over. Continue to stagger the 1x6 boards and cut off the excess. You want to dry fit all of the boards first before you secure them down to the plywood. Once you dry fit all the 1x6 herringbone pieces, use wood glue and 1 inch nails to secure them in place. Make sure to use a lot of wood glue and glue the sides of your boards where they each meet.
after everything is secure, place a bunch of weight on the tabletop for a few hours to let the wood glue set. Use a scrap piece of wood or a straight edge as a guide and clamp it down so that you can make a straight cut down the edge of your herringbone table. Cut off all the excess one by six pieces. Use wood filler and a putty knife to fill in all the cracks and gaps in your tabletop trim and base. Also fill in any little nail holes that are visible. Cut the 1x2 trim to size using a 45 degree angle on your miter saw. Use wood glue and a nailer to nail the trim into your tabletop. Don't worry if there are any gaps in your trim and the tabletop or in the corners, you can fill in these gaps with wood filler. Sand the entire surface of the table and base using a sander. Start with rough grit and then work your way up to a fine grit. Use a piece of sandpaper to get all the sharp corners as well. First, I used a water-based pre-stain wood conditioner and just applied it with a rag. Next, I used this premium wood stain from Verathane in the color Ebony. I applied the stain with a sponge brush and then wiped off the excess with a rag.
Cut your table base one by three pieces to size. I mitered the corners of my base at 45 degrees. Set your Craig jig and drill bit to three quarters of an inch. For each of the four supports, you should have two to four holes along the top. For the middle support, you should drill two pocket holes in each end and two holes along the top. Use wood glue and one and a half inch brad nails to secure the four supports together. Use one and a quarter inch pocket screws to screw your middle support into your side supports. Position the base directly in the center of your table and use a tape measure to verify. Use one and a quarter inch screws to screw the base down into your tabletop. These table legs came with long screws that you can just screw up into the tabletop. I waited until the table got to my friend's house before I secured the legs to the tabletop. For the polyurethane, I applied three coats and lightly sanded the table with 320 grit sandpaper after the first and second coats. Lightly sanding in between coats really makes the table nice and smooth. You'll notice that when you sand in between coats, it leaves a little white dust and that's okay. Just wipe off all the dust before you apply the next coat of poly. 